welcome all of our visionaries that are watching online. If you're in the building, make some noise this morning. Yeah. God is so good. Uh, we're going to be starting a brand new series. Before I tell you the title of this series for this particular month, I want to play a quick game. And this is a game that you probably played when you were in school. I don't know if they still play this game. Uh, or not. I don't know. So I'm going to need a little bit of crowd participation, okay? Just a little bit of crowd participation, okay? How many of y'all ever played the game Telephone? Y'all remember that back in the day? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When, if you don't know, raise your hand. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say Never Telephone. Heard. Okay. <laughs> telephone was the game where if you, when you were in school, somebody would, the first person would have a sentence, a phrase, or something, and they would tell somebody else, and you had to pass that message from the, from the front, all they could be in a circle or all the way to the end of the line. Okay? Y'all remember this game? Okay? We're going to do that just real quick. So I may walk off the screen, but I, stay with me. Okay? Stay with me. All right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell a couple, one person, and what I'm, what I'm going to do is you're going to tell somebody else, and you have to go across, and we're going to probably get, get to about five or six people. Okay? So hold on. Let me see. what I got, I got my little sentence that we're going to say. Okay? Are y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Okay, hold on. Let me turn off my mic, because if I, if I whisper it, y'all all going to hear it. <laughs> no, right here. This is going to be the last one. Last one. All right. What, what, did, you, what did you hear? What did you hear? The funny bunny was clicking something. That is not what I said. Here's what I said. Because in the game of telephone, you can't repeat it, okay? The funny bunny hit the colored candy in the colored can. I said all of that. I promise you. I read it right here. Okay, okay. <laughs> so... Y'all, typically when you play the game of telephone, what the first person said is never, ever what the last person says. Somewhere along the way, this time, apparently for me to Trisha, there was, a, there was some type of miscommunication, a, a, something that discombobulation happened, that at the end, all we heard at the end was the funny bunny. That was the only part that was correct, okay? If... That typically happens not just in the game of telephone, but it even happens in culture, okay? There are so many cultural sayings that we say that when it was originally said, what we think of it now and what we say now is not even directly connected to what was said at first. So many things in culture. And so what we're going to look at for these next few weeks are specific things that we say in culture a lot. And we're going to find out whether or not, because for us as followers of Jesus, God and his word is our final authority. Okay. Now, I say this a lot. The word of God is not the only authority, but it is the final authority. You can look in. Uh, science does help us understand things, right? Like, if you cut yourself, guess what? You are going to bleed, right? So, but the final authority is the word of God. So we're going to start a brand new series that we are calling, Did God Say That? Did God Say That? These cultural sayings that we say to each other, we're trying to encourage somebody, we're trying to make ourselves feel better, we're, we're, we're trying to motivate ourselves, or we're just trying to let people know who we are. We say these things, and some of it originates from the Word of God, a lot of it. But by the time we have heard it from others to somebody else to somebody else, and it gets to us or it gets, or it gets to the culture, it's not even close at all to what the Word of God says. Did God say that? And today, the phrase that we are going to look at is a phrase that I'm guarantee, Charles Brown, I guarantee that almost every person up in here has probably said at least one time in your life. I've said it. And the phrase is this. 
God wants me to be happy. How many of y'all have ever said that? Or you try to encourage somebody. Man, God just wants you to be happy. Come on, be honest. Anybody ever said that before? Yeah, God just wants me to be happy. Now, here's what I want everybody to know, okay? God does not want you miserable, okay? <laughs> so I want to be very clear. Where we're going with this message is not that God wants you to be miserable and unhappy, but when we typically are saying this phrase in our culture, we're not actually just talking about the actual definition of happiness, what we're really saying, because the definition of happiness is contentment, it's gladness, it's a, it's a feeling of, of excitement. Like, yes, I do believe that God wants happiness in our lives. But is this God's goal for your life, for you and I to be happy? Typically when this is said, it's said because of this, okay? When we typically think about happiness, right? Here's what, how it usually goes. We think to ourselves, whatever makes me happy must be right. So put it on the screen. We think if it, if it, if it makes me happy, it's the right thing. If it, if it makes me unhappy, it must be the wrong thing. Because happiness, I, I, if, I'm, if, it, if I'm not feeling right, I'm unhappy. Or we think this. We think, show them the next screen. We start to think that comfort, immediate, safe, things that are safe, things that are easy, things that are convenient, that this is God's will. If it's easy, if I can just do it, if I don't have to work hard for it, my comfort zone, if whatever I, if I pray for it and I get it right away, then that's God's will. And the opposite of this, of discomfort, delay, risk, suffering, inconvenience, and obstacles, that can't be God's will. That's what we really are saying when we say God wants me to be happy. If we really cut through all of those things, well, God, look, look, look if it's hard, no, this can't be God. I got to wait. Oh, no, uh -uh. it's my money and I want it. Yeah. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> Come on now. Right. But God wants me to be happy. There's an obstacle. I got to. This ain't God. This must be the devil. That's what we typically do. If something goes wrong, we automatically, that's the devil in it. And sometimes the devil is like, God, you better get your people because I ain't even bothering them with this one. They don't even know. Did, did you send this to their life? That's typically what happens. And the problem with this type of thinking, that God wants me to be happy, is that it often gives us permission to do things that dishonor God yeah. when we say that. Because I want ease. I want comfort. And don't get me wrong, every one of us wants comfort. Like, like think about it. There's a reason why broccoli and vegetables are not called comfort food, right? right? right. Now, some of y'all may love broccoli and peas and lima beans and all, but that's not comfort food. Comfort food is when you get some biscuits. <laughs> and I know these are greens, but them collard greens. Yeah. Throw a little bit of that neck, turkey neck in them collard greens and take it to the next level and then get me some fried chicken. Jesus! Comfort food, right? Or <laughs> get you a little bit of that dessert. What, you, what, what, kind, what kind of cakes y'all like? What kind of cakes and pies y'all like? Red velvet, peach cobbler. See how quick y'all said that? What else? Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Come on, come on. What else? Banana pudding. Banana pudding. Don't, listen, why y'all up here in church going, I ain't going to say nothing. Come on now, we all got comfort food. I'll tell you mine. Spicy nacho Doritos. You give me some of them, and you give me a little purple Powerade. It's a taste of heaven right there, y'all. Don't give me no uh, little, little grilled cheese. With a little bit of turkey, little grilled turkey and cheese with that. Put them Doritos on that thing. Woo! <laughs> telling you, telling you, comfort. We like it, but what happens is without knowing it, we begin to worship these false gods of comfort and money and pleasure and things. 
and we don't end up dishonoring God and even damage our relationship with others because we think God just wants me to be happy. Okay? Now, here's what I want everybody to know. I don't have this on the screen, but if you actually search through the scriptures, okay, and depending on the translation, you're going to see a difference between half the word happy or happiness and the word re- joy or joyful or rejoice. Okay? Depending on the translation, you're going to see uh, uh, happy mentioned somewhere between 10 and 30 times in the Bible. You're going to see joy somewhere between 300 and 430 times in the Bible. So when we talk about God wants me to be Happy, that is very hardly even mentioned in the Bible. What the word Bible actually talks about more is the word joy, for you to be joyful. Now, I did a lot of research on this because I was like, okay, is there a huge difference in each one? Hebrew word, Greek word, typically they're not that far off, okay? Happiness and joy aren't that far off. But if I see something only a few times, and I see another word mentioned hundreds of times, I think that's a, that's a dead giveaway that God wants us to focus on one more so than the other. Okay, now again, I'm not saying God doesn't want us to be happy or anything like that. I'm not saying he doesn't want you happy. But today what we're going to find out is that that is not God's primary goal for your life. Okay? It's not a guy's primary goal. And the, the main reason that we're even focusing on this today is because for much of my life, I believed a false gospel. Okay? I believed a false gospel. Now, here's the big thing. When it comes to the things of God, we are not, more often than not, we're not fighting against right and wrong. Because most people, they know the difference. It's, you know when something is it's wrong, it stands out, right? What we're fighting against, especially today, in our culture today, is what's between right and almost right. That's what we're fighting against. Because it's not that this is all the way wrong. It's just not all the way right. It's close. And one little tweak of this changes everything. Amen. One little tweet. So specifically what I want to do right now is I want, to, I want to help show us that this is not God's goal. And I want to talk about two times specifically where God does not want you to be happy. Okay? Let's go with the first one. The first uh, way, uh, way in which God does not want you to be happy is God does not want you to be happy when you are focused on things of this world more than him. I'm going to say it again. God does not want you to be happy when you are focused on things of this world more than him. Let me show you this in scripture. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. It says, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. When you love the world, now listen, it's not talking about the globe. It's talking about the system, the culture. It's not talking about the people. This one isn't. It's not saying, like, don't love the people of this world. No, it's not saying that. Because the Bible actually says, love your neighbor as yourself, okay? You always have to put the Bible up against the Bible, up, up, up against other scriptures, okay? So understand this. Here's what it's saying. It's saying, don't love the system of this world, the culture that this world is trying to, to, to put on every single person, the ways that aren't of God, okay? Don't love this world, the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Amen. For the world, remember, the system of the world that is sinful offers only a craving for physical pleasure. Oh, man, it feels good, so I must, it must, it, God wants me to be happy because this feels good. Okay, or craving for everything we see. If I see it, I want it, I buy it, I got to have it. And a pride in our achievements and possessions. Woo! Look at that car right there. Y'all don't understand. That thing is mine right there. 
Oh, I just got promoted. See, y'all can't, y'all can't even see me no more. You know what I'm saying? Don't even talk to me. If you ain't in the same tax bracket, I can't even hear you. Now, I know that's, that's nothing any of y'all have done. I've been in, I've been in, like, I've been in arguments with people. And their response to me has been, well, you don't make more money than me. And I'm like, bruh, we talking about Jordan and LeBron. Where does, where you come? Why you got to talk about my bank account? Bro, chill. Pride in our achievements and our possessions. These are not from the father, but are from the world and the system of this world. Next verse. And guess what's happening to this world? And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. God does not want you happy if, it's with, if you're loving the things of this world more than him. God does not want you to be happy if you're more focused on your own pleasure than on pleasing him. And here's how good God is. Here's another verse, and I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures today, but stay with me. Here's another verse. Philippians 2, verse 13. Here's how good God is about this. He loved you so much that he knew that in our own way, we could not do the things that pleases him in our own power. So what does he do? He started, God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Amen. We please him, not pleasing ourselves. If, if pleasing ourselves, we're more happy than pleasing God. If God's not happy, if God's not full of joy, if God is not pleased, but I am, that's a problem. This feels good to me, but God said, I don't do that. But see, God, it feels good to me, though. But I said, don't do it. See, you see what I'm talking about? God's goal is not your happiness, especially if it doesn't please him. And I remember this verse uh, that, that uh, a story in the Bible where the disciples, because sometimes there are things that we even do for God, right, that do please him, right? Amen. Which is great. If you're pleasing God, right, Maybe it's hard for you, but you're still pleasing him. Let me tell you something. There was more blessing than that than anything else. If you can tell, uh, I think uh, uh, Sheree actually read a scripture in the huddle this morning, and it was talking about the fruit of the spirit. It talks about love and joy and peace and patience. And one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. Self-control is not pleasing to you. But you know who it pleases? God. Because if I can control my own urges and my own desires, I'm pleasing him. If I have no self-control and I just give in to whatever I want to do, God's not pleased. There's a guy on, 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 the, on Instagram. He's always going, God ain't pleased. God ain't pleased. People are always doing something crazy. But, there's a story, but sometimes we are pleasing God, but God wants our pleasure and our joy and our happiness to be in something else. So there's a story in the Bible where, the, where Jesus sends out all the disciples. And he tells them, you all go into these towns. You're going to cast the sick. You're going to uh, you heal the sick, cast out demons, do all this. So the disciples go out. They lay hands on the sick. They recover. They're casting out demons. They come back to Jesus. And they are so excited. They are happy. They're like, Jesus, we did everything you told us. We laid hands on the sick. People got healthy. We cast out demons. We saw them flee. They were like, yo, this is amazing. This is unbelievable. Nobody can stop us. And Jesus was like, man, I'm so glad that that happened. But I don't want you all to be excited about the fact that demons ran away when you told them. It actually says this in Luke 10, 20. Jesus said this, don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. This is where our happiness comes from. Amen. This is where our joy comes from, is the fact that we are known by God. Yes. He loves you. And when your name is written, another version says your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. That's what you're happy about. Because guess what? If my name is registered in heaven, whether or not evil spirits flee or not, guess what? My name is written in heaven, though. I, God lives in me, and I live in him. That is what should make us all truly, 
truly happy and excited and joyful. So the first thing, what do we know? We know that God does not want us to be happy when we're focused on things of this world more than him. The second, the second way that God doesn't want us to be happy, God does not want us to be happy when it causes you to sin. I'm going to say it again. When it causes you to sin. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 1, verses 14 through 16. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living. When you give your life to Christ, you become a new person. Okay? But it's easy for us to slip right back into those old ways and old habits that made us feel good and happy when we were in them, but really was leading us straight to death and hell. And he's saying, don't go back into that. You've been shown the light. Don't go back into darkness. Don't go back to living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better back then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be what? Holy, because I am holy. It does not say, be happy because I am happy. It says to be holy because he is holy. Holy means set apart, right standing. It does not mean perfect. I'm going to say it again. Because a lot of times people, when they hear holy, they think holier than thou, perfect. That is not what it means. It means set apart. You're not like everybody else. Amen. See, a lot of, when you don't know Jesus and you're in your sin, you stay in your sin. You're like, man, this is just, this is just me. Bad attitude? This is just me. No, it's not just you. You just have a bad attitude, and you can change that. Because the fruit of the Spirit is joy, gentleness, kindness, right? So that's the old you. When you're in your sin, you stay there. But when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, you start getting convicted about those things that used to used to just do any old kind of way. So you're not you're set apart. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. Listen, that's why he sent Jesus. He knew we couldn't be perfect. So he sent Jesus. Now, Jesus is perfect. And every time that when we repent and say, God, forgive me of my sin, he no longer sees you. He sees Jesus. So he's calling us, though, to be holy because he is not chasing after your own desires. And I wrote this down because I thought it would be. That would be beneficial. I want to show you another scripture, Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through two, because I want you to see the, the logic that is off when we say God just wants us to be happy. I'm going to show you how this is off. This is Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 says this. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the what? The sin, we just talked about that, that so easily trips us up. It trips us up, right? We, 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 oh man, I fell into sin, right? Tripped you up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. How do we do this? Verse 2. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he's seated at the place of honor beside God's throne. Keep this on the screen for me there, Jaden. okay? So it talked about the sin. Remember, God doesn't want us happy if it causes us to sin. So because of what Jesus has done, don't let sin trip you up, okay? Because you want to be happy. You want to feel good. You want comfort. No, let that go. How do I do that, though, Pastor? You keep your eyes on Jesus. And look at this. It says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. So think about this logic. God just wants us to be happy, okay? Comfort, ease. If that was the case, why did Jesus get on the cross? If the goal was comfort and ease, there is no reason to endure a rugged cross that you are nailed into. But he did it because of the joy that was awaiting him, okay? There is joy on the other side of enduring pain. 
We they think the other way. We think no pain, joy. Comfort, joy. But this shows us there was joy because Jesus endured the pain. He went through those different things. So here's how this logic is off, that God just wants us to be happy. Okay? I'm going to paint a picture for you. Let's say you have been looking for a house, and you find a house. It's your dream house. You put an offer in, they accept it. And guess what? You are so what now? Happy. What you didn't know, though, is you got this house at a great price because the person who's selling it just lost a loved one and they can no longer take care of it. So let me ask you this. If God just wants you to be happy, why did they have to go through that? See how that logic doesn't, doesn't matter? If God, cause if God just wants you to be happy, it has to be you and 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 you. It has to be all of us. Why did they have to go through the pain while I got happiness and joy? Because God wants me happy. You see how that logic doesn't add up? It just doesn't. Now, on the flip side, though, when we truly understand joy and we truly understand who God is and what God wants from us, and I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to catch myself back up. When we truly understand what God truly wants from us, what you can actually see in both of these situations, how God is right there with both of those people. So remember that example. But I just wanted to show you that that logic that God wants you to be happy doesn't add up. It doesn't add up because that would mean that 8 billion people would need to be happy all the time. And it doesn't add up. So the way that we get this joy and the way that we truly find joy is by keeping our eyes on who? Jesus. Jesus. And that leads me to my next scripture, Psalm 1611. Here's what you need to know that God will make known to you the way of life. In his presence is fullness of what? Joy. In your right hand, God, there are pleasures forever. So the way to find the joy, the happiness, is not on your own. It's not by uh, pleasing yourself. It's not by doing you. It's by being in the presence of God. Because in his presence, there are pleasures forever. Forever. You see, our own happiness typically is based on our happenings. If things are happening the way I want them to happen, I'm happy. Things ain't happening the way I want them to happen, I'm not happy. This must not be God's will for my life. And the reason I'm preaching this, you all, is because I told you earlier, I believed a false gospel growing up. That if I served God, that everything was going to be all right. Everything was going to be good. But I wasn't going to go through anything because if I served God, I wasn't going to have to go through all this pain. And then I started going through the pain. And I was like, but I thought if I served God, everything was going to be okay. And what happens to a lot of us is when tough times hit, if you believe a false gospel that Believing in God means everything is going to be perfect and that you're going to be happy. The first time you go through a difficult time, the first thing that you're going to let go of is your relationship with God. And I refuse to allow us at Kazone Church to be people who don't truly live this out or believe what God's word really says. Because did God say he just wants you to be happy? I believe this. Now, some of this was my own fault for not really searching the scriptures on my own. But I remember being in church saying, if you give your life to Jesus, you're going to be healthy. You're going to make you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to have houses and land. And that's not always the case. And then when I didn't have all of that, I was like. Either they lied to me or God's not real. And that's what happens to a lot of people. They walk away from God, not because God isn't who he is. It's because they believe that God was different than he really is. We started to believe he just wants you to be happy. But when you face the pain, the trials, all these different things, we 
give up on him. Amen. Now, here's what I want you to know. God wants you blessed. He wants to bless you. The scriptures actually say this, that his thoughts for you are good and not evil. God is not up in heaven going, let me see how I can make Krista's life a living hell. He's not up in heaven doing that. He's not. He's not going, mm, they didn't pray long enough. So, hmm, Paris, no blessings for him today. He didn't pray long enough. That's not how God works. Amen. Okay? Because let me just tell you, there have been times in my life when I wasn't praying like I should have been praying. And I wasn't in my word like I needed to be in my word. And God blessed my socks off. I don't know why. And there are other times when I've been in my word, and I've been praying, I've been fasting, and something bad happened. I don't know why. God blessing you and wanting to bless you is not 100% dependent even on your faithfulness to him. Because if that were the case, some of y'all would have been gone a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Me too. On, Sometimes it's, you look up and you're like, because he blessed you, you're like, I need to come back to the Lord because maybe this was a, this was a warning for me, right? So God does want you blessed. He does. I do believe God wants us to be healthy. I do believe God will prosper you. I, so please hear me today. What I'm not saying is God wants you unhappy, miserable, all of that. What I want us to truly understand, though, is that this is not God's goal for your life. God's goal for your life is twofold. The first one is holiness. The second one is your trust. More than you wanting to, him wanting you to be happy, he wants you to be holy. And he wants you to trust him. Yeah. Amen. He wants you to trust him. I'm going to show you this here in just a moment. Here's what you need to know is that holiness is the pathway to true happiness and joy. I just showed you that in the last verse. Psalm 1611. Go back to the last one real quick for me. Uh, Jaden, Psalm 1611. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. When you know him and you are in his presence... He makes you more like him. When you're in his presence, that's how you become holy. And when you're in his presence, that's where you're truly full of joy. We so often think that holiness and happiness are exclusive things. We think the only way that I can be happy is, well, I can't be holy. Or the only way I can be holy is, I got to walk around with my head down low. I'm going up. On a rough side of a mountain, I got to wear, I got to be dressed up, suited and booted all the time. Can't wear my J's anymore. Got to cover up all my tattoos. Got to walk around looking po and tired and God is good, but you look like he's terrible. That's what we think holiness is. Can't have no more fun. Got to be holy. So sorry, y'all. Can't hang out with y'all no more because God called me to be holy. I got to live an unhappy life. We laughing, but that's how we view holiness. Or that's how people talk. That's how we told us that the only way to be holy is everything that you enjoy doing, got to give it all up. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff we do need to give up. Let's keep it real. Okay? But, but he's not asking you to give. If it's sinful, against what his word says, yes. But he's not asking you to give up having a good time with your family. He's not asking you to give up enjoyable moments in life. Holiness and happiness are connected. Yes. When you are holy, you truly are happy. Yes. Oh, yeah. So here's what I need you to know. Instead of saying, God wants me to be happy, say this instead. God wants me to trust him in all, no matter the circumstance. Amen. This is the goal. The goal is not your happiness. It's not your ease, your comfort, your excitement, just you being content with because everything is perfect. The goal is you trusting God no matter the circumstance. Amen. That's what God wants for you. So let's go back to the example that I gave you a few minutes ago, okay? 
Remember, you got your brand new dream home, you're happy, but the person who sold it to you just lost a loved one, so they had to get, buy the house. And now their loss equals to your gain and happiness. Now, watch this. Person that just bought the house, when they trust God, no matter the circumstance, they trusted God to provide them with a home. Because that's a, that's a need that every person needs. Every person needs shelter and a safe place to, to, for their family. Everybody needs that, right? You pray, God provided that, and he, you, he wants you to trust him no matter the circumstance. So in this circumstance, he provided you with your dream home. You are happy. You are blessed. Now, the other person who lost a loved one, if this is the goal, the same thing applies. I lost a loved one. God wants me to trust him even in the middle of my loss. And because he is enough and he's my provider, he, I'm giving this up, but I have him and he is my strength and he will build me back up and he will comfort me and he will give me peace even in the midst of my pain. The goal is not happiness, because if the goal was happiness, we would never have to go through any kinds of pain. Let me ask you this. Any woman that has ever given birth, it's a painful experience. Now, ladies, you don't even have to have had a child yet. If I gave you the option, pain-free childbirth or painful childbirth, what are you going to choose? Say it loud. Don't, don't be scared. What are you going to choose? Pain-free. Now, let me ask you, though. You're going through this painful... If pain meant bad and not God's will, none of us would be alive. Because no woman wants to have to go through that pain. But on the other side of that pain is joy and true happiness. So do you understand that sometimes there is pain... There's joy on the other side of it. So we don't say God wants us to be happy. We, we, God wants us to trust him no matter the circumstance. Here's the la last few scriptures and I'm going to close. John 6, 29. God wants you to trust him. How do I know this? God told, Jesus told them this. The only work of God, the only work God wants from you is to believe in the one he has sent. James 1, 2, and through, 2 through 4. Here's what it says. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble come, of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Show them uh, uh, James chapter 1, verses uh, 2 through 3. Consider an opportunity for great joy, not with ease. What does it talk about? What's an opportunity for great joy? It's what? Troubles. Next verse. James 3 through 4. I'm trying to help you so we can believe God's word. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. This is happiness and joy. When I don't need anything. But the only way I get here is I had to go through. So I'm going to say it again. What does God want? Does he just want, the goal for God, is it just your happiness? No. The goal that God wants for every person is for you to trust him no matter the circumstance. When you're going through the pain, trust him. When, you when, when everything is good, when you got a lot of money in your bank account, trust him. When you have nothing in your bank account, trust him. My happiness is not dependent on my happenings. It's all dependent on the one I trust. And even though I may be going through pain, and even though you may be going through a painful situation, guess what? You can still have joy and find joy in him. I'm not saying the pain feels good, no. But I'm saying because you have him, you can get through it. That's what God wants for you. Here's what I want to end up. Show him the very last verse. I showed this to you before. God will make known to you the way of life. In his presence is fullness of joy. Your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And I'm going to close and pray. I wanted this up at the very end because it says this, he will make known to you the way of life. And in his presence, there's fullness of joy. 
If you don't know him, you can't have this. You've got to know God. You've got to be in his presence. You've got to know who he is because you can't trust something and somebody you don't know. Amen. Right? Somebody you don't know is trying to sell you something. You'd be like, mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. But if you know them and you know they love you and they want the best for you, you're going to be more willing to trust. It's no different with God. It's no different. If you don't know him, this is hard. I can't trust him. I don't know him. Well, if you know him, you know that his thoughts for you are good and not evil. You know he wants to bless you. But more than any of that, he wants you to trust him. So Heavenly Father, today, help us to trust you. It's not that you don't want us to be happy at all. It's that more than our happiness, you want us to trust you. Because as well as we trust you, as we're in your presence, that's where we have fullness of joy. God, even when we go through tough situations, God, I pray that we will trust you. It may not be a joyful. It may have a lot of discomfort. It may be, it may be obstacles. But God, we will trust you. We will do what Philippians 4.13 says, is that we will be content no matter the situation. Because we can do all things through Christ. We can trust you in the good times. We will trust you in the bad times because, and the rough times because we can do all things through you. Amen. So God, help us to find our true joy and happiness in you today. God, help us to be in your presence. Not searching after ease, but searching after you. Help us to live this out, God. This week, I pray that we'll say no to the things that aren't like you and say yes to you because when we say yes to you, there is joy and pleasures forevermore. Help us to find true pleasure in you and not our happenings. In Jesus' name. As we keep praying, maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus yet. If you want true joy in your life and true happiness, the only way to it is through Jesus. Today's the day. Who was Jesus? He was the son of God. What did he do? He left heaven, came to this earth, and lived a sin-free life because he knew that none of us could do that. He willingly got on a cross at the age of 33 and was, was, was beaten and bruised and became your sin and my sin and the sins of every person that would ever live. He became that and died on the cross. And the moment he died, he put to death sin death and the grave he was placed in a tomb and three days later he walked out of that tomb as our resurrected Lord and Savior and now anybody who calls on his name is not made into a better version of themselves but they're made into a brand new person who now has the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings living inside of them and now you can pursue him and now you can have fullness of joy your sins are forgiven he will make you holy and like him if you want that joy today, whether you're watching online or you're, or you're in this room, if you want that joy today, lift up your hand long enough for me to see you so that you can give your life to Jesus. While none may be in here, maybe this is for you that's watching me today. Today's the day. Give your life to Jesus. Make him your Lord. Repeat after me, everybody, because nobody prays alone. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. I know that I'm a sinner, and I needed a Savior. Thank you for raising Jesus from the dead. I give my life to you. Jesus, you are Lord. Be the Lord of my life. I give you my life. I give you my mind. I give you my words. Help me today to be more like you, to trust you, and teach me to love others the way you love me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate Kazon Church loud and proud today.